Hi, I'm John Odin. I work with the development team here at Boson Software, and right now I'm going to work through a lab exercise so that we can learn about Ether Channel. We're going to learn what it is, when to use it, how to configure Ether Channel, and how to verify that it's operating correctly. Okay, let's get started. Before we begin configuring the devices in our lab, let's take a moment to examine the network topology that we'll be working with. We can see that our network is a typical layer 2 switch network that's arranged into layers. Going from left to right, we can see that we have an access layer that connects to end station devices such as user workstations, IP phones, and such. This layer aggregates into the distribution layer right in the middle, which in turn aggregates into the core. Notice that every device has redundant connections to every other device. And this is good in that we have redundancy in case any connection is broken. There's always going to be a backup link. Now the problem with redundancy at layer 2 is that it will allow a switching loop to form, and since there's no time to live mechanism in a layer 2 Ethernet frame, we can get into a situation where frames loop endlessly throughout the topology, which can cause all kinds of problems. Now the spanning tree protocol will solve that problem for us at the cost of half of our available bandwidth. Let's consider for a moment this little piece of our network right here. We can see that we've got two connections between these two devices, and what spanning tree will do for us is that it's going to examine the situation and based on whichever one of these paths has the least cost to get to the root bridge, spanning tree will use that one and it will disable the other one. So maybe this link up here at the top gets chosen to be the active link that carries traffic and then spanning tree may, or not may, but would disable this other link down here. Now that other link is still there. It's still an alternative path in case something happens with this link up here, but under the normal operation of the network, only this link at the top is going to be carrying traffic unless something happens to it. Maybe the cable is broken for some reason. Then spanning tree will recalculate the topology and activate this link down here at the bottom. So even though we've got two links, we'll only use one or the other of them at any given point in time, which is why we say that we give up half of our bandwidth even though we have redundancy because spanning tree is eliminating the possibility of any loops in the network. Ether channel, which is the primary topic of this lab, is a technology that allows us to have the benefits of redundancy but lets us continue to use both links to carry traffic. Ether channel allows us to take switch ports and group them together so that spanning tree sees them as a single link. Now in this lab we're going to be interested in only two devices. We're going to be working with distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 and the links that connect them directly together. So we're going to be looking right here at distribution switch 1 and distribution switch 2 and we're only going to be considered with ports 5 and 6 on distribution switch 1 and 5 and 6 on distribution switch 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Ether Channel to bundle these together so that Spanning Tree only sees them as a single link. And we're sort of tricking Spanning Tree here, if you think about it that way, so that it keeps both links up and uses both links to carry traffic. Okay, here we are at the device consoles of our two switches that we're going to be configuring. Remember, we're going to be building an ether channel between DSW1 and DSW2. Let's take a quick look back at the topology just for a moment. And just to review the devices that we're looking at are these two switches right here. And specifically, we're looking at these two links between these switches, ports 5 and 6 on DSW1 and 5 and 6 on DSW2. And we're going to use Ether Channel to bundle these together so that we can cause Spanning Tree to treat these two links as one. So the first thing that we should do is to verify our connectivity on each switch. I'm going to use the Show CDP Neighbors command, and here I am on DSW1. And from the output of that command, I can see that DSW1 sees DSW2 on his fast Ethernet 5 and 6. Let's go over to DSW2 and do the same thing. And we can see looking back the other way we have the same situation. DSW2 sees DSW1 on his Ethernet, fast Ethernet 5 and 6. So we've got connectivity between these two switches and we can use that connectivity to build an Ether channel across those links. Let's do a little bit more investigation and do a show IP interface brief 
on both devices. And we can just verify once again that Fast Ethernet 5, Fast Ethernet 6 are up and up on Switch 1. Let's do the same thing over here on Switch 2. And we can see that we've got exactly the same situation here. Now, furthermore, let's do a show interfaces trunk. And we can see that Fast Ethernet 5 and 6 is set up for trunking on Switch 1. And let's do the same thing on Switch 2. And again, we see the same thing that we would expect, that Fast Ethernet 5 and 6 are set up for 802.1Q trunking on Switch 2 as well. Let's continue our investigation of the current configuration of these two switches by using the show spanning tree. Let's take a look at the state of the spanning tree for VLAN 1. If we look at the command output, we can see that DSW1 is the root bridge. Let's go over on DSW2 and do the same thing. And if we look at Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06, which as you will recall are the two switch ports that connect these two switches together, we can see over here on switch 1, since it is the root bridge, all of its ports are in a forwarding state as we would expect. Fast Ethernet 5 and Fast Ethernet 6 are the ports that we're most interested in because they're the ones that we're going to use to, to do Ether Channel with. If we look over at Switch 2, let's look at ports 5 and 6 on Switch 2, and here we start to see the issue. We can see that Fast Ethernet 05 is in fact forwarding, but look at Fast Ethernet 06. It's blocking because Spanning Tree is disabled Fast Ethernet 06 and it's using it as a standby in case something happens to the link between Fast Ethernet 05 on Switch 2 and Fast Ethernet 5 on Switch 1. If something were to, were to happen, if the cable were to become separated, then Spanning Tree would recalculate and the link across Fast Ethernet 06 would come up. But still, this is why we say we're wasting half of the bandwidth. If we go back and look at the topology, just as a quick review, we can see that we're using this link, the Fast Ethernet 05 link, but we're not using this one. It's currently being blocked right here on Switch 2, so that it doesn't carry traffic unless something happens to this link over here. Okay, so now that we've had a moment to look around and examine the connectivity between DSW1 and DSW2 without Ether Channel, We've examined what happens with Spanning Tree. Let's go ahead now and actually begin to configure Ether Channel between these two switches. Remember that for switch ports to be bundled together using Ether Channel, the configurations of all of the involved switch ports must be identical. So to ensure that, we're going to set Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06 back to their default configuration state on both switches. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to do a default interface Fast Ethernet 05 and the same thing for Fast Ethernet 06. This is on switch 1. Let's go over to switch 2 and do the same thing. There we have defaulted Fast Ethernet 05 and now also Fast Ethernet 06. Now back on switch 1, the next step is to use the channel group command to place Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06 in channel group 1. And I'm going to use the interface range command to save a little bit of typing. So I'm going to use the channel group command to place these switch ports in channel group 1. Let's use the question mark help to see what else we need on this particular command. We can see that we need the mode keyword, so let's do that and let's see what our options there are. Notice that we have several different modes that we can use when we place switch ports in a channel group. Now, these various modes have to do with the way the negotiation occurs between the two different ends that are going to negotiate an Ether Channel connection. Now in subsequent labs we're going to take a look at a couple of dynamic 
negotiation protocols like P and PAGP, but for now we're just going to force the channel group to come up by using the on keyword. So here we go, channel group one mode on. And notice that when, when we do that something interesting happens. We see that a new interface has been created, interface port channel one. So now instead of addressing the switch ports individually as Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06, we're going to address port channel 1, which is the bundle that now contains Fast Ether Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06. Now let's do the same thing on switch 2. There's our interface range command so that we can grab Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06 both at once. Channel group 1, mode. Remember our modes from before? All of these have to do with dynamic negotiation, but we're in this case we're just going to force the channel group to be active using mode on. And notice that just like before, we now have a new port channel interface, port channel 1, on switch 2. I'm going to do show IP interface brief and we can see our new port channel down there at the bottom. It's up and up. Same thing back over here on switch 1. We can see that we have our new port channel 1 on switch 1 now. It is also up and up. Recall that before we set up the port channel interface on switch 1 and switch 2, we had a trunk link across Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06 between Switch 1 and Switch 2. So let's go back and see what happened with that. We're, we'll do a show interfaces trunk on both switches. And over on Switch 2. So now we don't see a trunk link between DSW1 and DSW2 on Fast Ethernet 5 and 6. Well, we wouldn't expect to because we did a default interface uh, to, to clear out any configurations on Fast Ethernet 05 and 06 on both Switch 1 and Switch 2. So essentially that destroyed the trunk link that we had between those two switches. However, we need that trunk link between DSW1 and DSW2 to connect the VLANs on both switches. So what are we going to do about that? Well, let's go back and do a show IP interface brief to review. Instead of Fast Ethernet 5 and Fast Ethernet 6 connecting these two switches, now we have port channel 1 connecting these two switches, which is a bundle that consists of switch ports, Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06 on both ends. So what are we going to do? We're going to build the trunk link across the port channel. So how do we do that? Well, we do it the same way that we would do it if we were working with the switch ports directly. So here we go, back into configuration mode. We're going to go to interface port channel 1. We're going to do switch port in cap switch port trunk in cap dot one q and the same thing over on switch two interface port channel one set up dot one q encapsulation and set the mode to trunk. And we'll let things settle down on both switches and now let's do another show interfaces trunk. And look right here, we see a trunk has formed across port channel 1 on switch 1. And the same thing on switch 2. There's our port channel 1. It is now a trunking interface on switch 2 just as it was over here on switch 1. So now let's take a look at what's going on with spanning tree. Let's take a look at the state of the spanning tree for VLAN 1 on switch 1. 
And we can see that no longer do we have Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06 with one of the two of them being blocked. Now we have port channel 1 and we know that port channel 1 is a bundle of the two switch ports that are both being used to move traffic. We can see that it's in a forwarding state on switch 1. Let's do a show spanning tree VLAN 1 on switch 2. And we can see the same thing going on, but the difference, remember from before, we had Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet, 0 switch, uh, Fast Ethernet 06 on switch 2, but Fast Ethernet 06 was being blocked. It was set up as an alternate path in case something happened to the other link. But now we have port channel 01, or port channel 1 rather, which is a bundle that consists of switch ports Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06 and they're both being used to move traffic between the switches. Do we still have our redundancy? Absolutely. If something happened to one or the other of the underlying switch ports the port channel would stay up. Now we wouldn't have as much available throughput because we would have one switch port in the bundle and not two but we would still enjoy the benefits of a redundant connection without giving up half of our bandwidth. And just to verify that, let's do a show interfaces port channel 1 and look right here. Instead of having 100 megabit per second fast Ethernet bandwidth as we would expect to see with a single switch port, we've got twice that. We've got 200 megabits per second because port channel 1 is a bundle that consists of two physical switch ports. Let's go back to switch 1 and do the same thing. Doing a show interface port channel 1 and we see we've got our 200 megabit per second bandwidth over here as well. Now let's take a look at a couple of commands that we can use to verify the proper configuration and operation of our ether channel configuration. Let's do a show ether channel port channel and we can see that we have channel group 1. The interface that's created as a result of this is port channel 1. And we can see that it's made up of fast ethernet 05, fast ethernet 06. And let's also do a show ether channel summary. And that's a nice concise command that shows us that we have port channel 1 made up of ports Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06. We can look back up here and see all of the various flags that can occur. We can see the P flag which means that the switch port is in a port channel. And we can see that down here for Fast Ethernet 05 and Fast Ethernet 06. And there we have it, a basic layer 2 ether channel configuration that takes a couple of switch ports, puts them in a channel group, and associates them with a port channel interface. We did that on both switches. And then we built a trunk link across those port channel interfaces, which gives us the redundancy of having multiple connections, but we don't give up half of our bandwidth. Thanks for taking time to view this lab. I hope it's helped you to gain a better understanding of Ether Channel. Be sure and check out our other Ether Channel labs where we will examine more advanced topics such as dynamic channel negotiation using LACP and PAGP.